Welcome back! First up, if you didn't see the previous video, I've got some merchandise now. T-shirts and hoodies and um, tank tops and stuff. So uh, there's a link in the description and mm, depending on where you're viewing this from, there's m there might be a merchandise shelf below this video. The cylinder, uh, I've uh, honed it to be 39.90 millimeters in diameter. That was what was needed to achieve a good finish. And a pretty nice cross hatch. I'm getting better at the honing and uh, the battery power drill helped a lot. Mark Atkinson has uh, started on the special piston I'm going to use, which he's going to fabricate for me. And Jesse Williams has offered to machine a head insert and head for me. Thanks, man. So things are happening faster than uh, what I expected. I was, um, I thought I was going to get stuck on the plating and um, and and basically struggle for uh, a good while, but um, I haven't. It's been pointed out that my coating is honing much faster than uh, what Nikka seal cylinders do, and maybe the coating is too soft. I. Uh, I received a set of harness testing files today, so uh, we'll check it. Either it's uh, too soft because there's too little of uh, of the boron nitride particles in the mix, or the boron nitride particles are <coughs> just very soft compared to silicon carbide. Uh, yeah, so we'll we'll check it now with the files and see what we can find. The test came in at less than 40 Rockwell, which is pretty soft, certainly softer than the test cylinder with uh, proper nickel seal, which uh, the 55 Rockwell could barely scratch. Now this might be a problem, I did know that the boron nitride was softer than a nickel seal. It certainly is much harder than uh, an iron liner, so I'm not sure if it will just be it will just mean that uh, the coating won't last as long as uh, a silicon carbide coating or if it's not usable at all. If it isn't usable at all, I have the solution already. I can dump in 500 grams of um, silicon carbide powder into the existing tank and run a hybrid boron nitride silicon carbide coating. And it should be harder, just as hard as the Nikasil coating. To do that, I will have to strip what's been plated on now, the old coat. And luckily, I've attained two liters of this definitely not nitric acid, which can uh, dissolve the nickel coating. But I might try to just hone, hone away until it's gone first. If it is a problem, that is. It might not be. I should probably just try it and see what happens. Or maybe not, because of the Mark Atkinson design uh, fancy super special piston. How do you think about it? Leave a comment. In this video I'm going to do kind of a summary, explain a few things and, um, and talk about the road from ID to this cylinder. 
And I'm going to answer some common questions, because there's a lot of questions that's uh, asked over and over again. So I'll answer those questions. But first, I want to show you a couple of tools that were sent to me by DN Performance in uh, Germany. The first one is a top dead center finder. It's in a really nice box with uh, laser cut um, innards. It's an indicator with an attachment that you can screw into a um, spark plug hole. And there's an extended plunger. So with this tool you can uh, rotate the crank and you will see where the reading starts dropping. It will rise until it starts dropping and then you have top dead center. And you can use it to time the ignition or um, or your intake or something else. I will be using these tools in uh, upcoming videos and show you a bit more how they work. But you can check out the um, DN Performances videos. There's links to the site and the videos in the description. The next tool is a neat timing uh, tool. Nice wooden box. It's a uh, I'm not quite sure what you call this. It's a rotational uh, indicator, or <laughs> but anyways, there's an attachment for um, for sockets here, so you can attach the socket that fits the nut on your flywheel, and there's this uh, bolt that you can use to thread into an existing uh, case bolt or case bolt hole, and uh, fasten it that way. And then as you rotate the crank, you can read out the rotation in degrees on the meter or the display here. Really nice. I'll use this tool too in uh, upcoming videos, so um, but I'll suggest you check it out, check out their videos and check out their site. If you watch the rest of this series, most questions will uh, probably be uh, answered already. But here's a few of them in short. I've made a list here. First up, the goal. The goal is to build the most powerful two-stroke ever compared to cylinder capacity or in relation to cylinder capacity so not the most powerful two-stroke not like one of the uh, boat two-strokes large like buildings but just the most powerful two-stroke versus cylinder capacity why just because it's fun and why 50 cc just because because you have to choose something. You could choose, uh, or I could have chosen uh, chosen 100cc or 200cc, but um, I think 50cc is kind of cool, and it's especially cool because it's it's a moped. 50cc is a moped. There's a larger goal too, or a bigger goal, and that is to create a prototyping facility in my garage. I've uh, talked about this before. To be able to design and print and cast and plate and machine cylinders and other engine parts and do prototyping and test out more or less stupid ideas. Ideas that no one else will test because there's no financial benefits to doing these tests. Stuff that probably is stupid or stuff that is just too crazy. That's what I want to do here. As of now I can do the designing and the printing and the casting I will try to improve upon the um, on the porosity in the casting. I'll show you. Uh, I bought a vacuum pump and I will try to do vacuum assisted casting. So uh, apply vacuum to the flask as I'm pouring to suck the metal into all the um, all the nooks and crannies and hopefully extract some of the gases in it or at least the air. That's in the plants. So more casting trials. I can do the plating. Now uh, it seems that the plating is too soft, but um, I've got the silicon carbide powder, so I and I think that will will work. I can't do the machining yet. I am uh, saving up for uh, buying a lathe, a small lathe. I don't have much room here, so it it has to be a small one because I also want to get a mill fitted in here, so um, probably something small, probably something from China, 
I know people hate those, but um, I've seen people do really great stuff on those small lathes. So um, yeah, people are asking how this cylinder stands out compared to other cylinders. There's one main thing, and that's the 100% of bore wide exhaust port. And people are always commenting that I will break rings. And if you go back and watch uh, the first few videos in the series, you will see that I'm going to use a special piston with a special retained ring, which can be, uh, which is allowed to move uh, out, to expand out just enough to seal, to create a good seal, but not more than that. So not enough to snag in a port. That's the theory, and it is tested. There's a Kiwi company that has. Um, been, uh, been running uh, tests and I've talked to one of the guys who um, who was uh, designing and testing and um, it did work so um, that's the plan the other thing here that makes this uh, hopefully better than uh, other cylinders is this huge rear transfer uh, inlets they are shaped like this to not bend the flow in the B transfers in uh, more than one plane so the flow has to bend like this or like this from the crankcase into the cylinder, but there's no bending around anything, like is uh, like is happening in all other cylinders, most of them. There's um, a couple of tiny RC cylinders I've seen that's uh, designed like this. The pipe, yes, I am aware that the pipe is the deciding factor in a two-stroke engine. It is by far the largest factor in producing power in a two-stroke. It will be designed and um, and simulated in Engmod uh, 2T, great simulation software. There's a link in the description to that one too. And uh, hopefully I uh, will uh, get a TIG welder and uh, weld it up myself, but probably the first pipe will be welded by um, someone else. There's a guy, Håvard, in, uh, in Sarsborg, which uh, has the equipment and I've seen a few pipes they're great so um, and he has uh, offered to do it and it's close by nearby so I think he will get the job why am I not uh, doing a liner instead of the plating much simpler people say a liner will cause uh, worse uh, heat transfer because there's a uh, it's not a uniform piece of material, or it's not one piece of material. There's a junction between two materials, and that will lead to bad heat transfer compared to a coated cylinder. And also the coefficient of friction of a steel liner is worse than what a silicon carbide, or even better, I think, boron nitride coating. What engine? The, the case will be custom made, or I might see if I uh, will modify the old uh, SPX um, case. I might try casting a new block or just machine it out of a solid block of aluminium. Hopefully I can do that myself, but probably I will uh, need to get someone to do it for me. The crank will be from uh, some scooter, haven't decided yet, but it will have a uh, 39 point uh, between one and seven in the stroke. Transmission, single variated, You've seen it on the SPX, watch the old videos, older videos, they're not that old. Uh, single variated because then I can use the launch lever as it's called for manual control. I won't have to tune in the weights uh, perfectly. I won't have to struggle with the belt heating up and uh, the RPM point changing. I can fine tune with my foot and hold it at... Uh, I can hold it at uh, plus minus 100 RPM. It's not that hard at all because you can hear the sound and it's easy to adjust to to keep it in tune. What bike? The SPX, but very likely reborn with a new custom frame. I um, I have something in the in I have thought of something really cool. So um, stay tuned for that. While waiting for the head and piston to be. Um, to be done, I will experiment with sealing the 3D printed model with this um, advanced board and mold sealer from uh, Easy Composites. Uh, it is meant to seal molds for um, uh, for doing layup of uh, fiber and um, and epoxy, but um, or and other casting jobs. 
But it should work really good for sealing uh, the print before casting and remove a lot of the, the flaws I've been, um, I've been uh, experiencing. So I think this product will uh, work really well, but it's expensive. And uh, spray paint might work just as good. But this one should fill in and create a much smoother surface. So I will test it out and thanks EC Composites. Uh, check out their site, there's a link in the description. They are um, offering a lot of cool materials. Honeycomb cores for uh, carbon fiber and uh, glass fiber uh, structures. And the fibers in uh, different um, grades and forms and weights. And I'm not that familiar with uh, the stuff, but I'm planning to get familiar with it because of the frame. That's a hint. But now I think I'm going to relax with a cigar, some rum, maybe some uh, Lagavulin and just listen to Pink Floyd and uh, celebrate in my way that it's going so well. Thanks for watching.